Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. And today is National Bourbon Day here in 2018. So I wanted to review for you this very special bourbon that a good friend of mine picked up while up in DC. Now apparently when he was going store to store, he happened to stumble on this untitled whiskey number eight. Very generic name, a generic label with some handwriting on it telling you which batch number it is, when it was bottled here in 2016. Um, and it also tells you it was bottled specifically for the Bourbon Steak Restaurant in DC. Okay, so we saw that and that's all very unique. The other thing that caught his eye was that it was uh, 120 proof and the color of it. That's ridiculous. That's why I have this little glass pushed up so that hopefully you could see that on the video. <clears throat> but Untitled Whiskey Number 8 is being bottled and created at the 1-8 Distilling Company there in D.C. as well. And they do a whole line under the Untitled name. So there is Untitled, you know, 9, 10, 11, and so on. Uh, but this Untitled Number 8 that he brought back for only $80, $85 just blew me away. Now, I was kind of concerned about it because, you know, these cognac and different fortified wine finished bourbons, they can be great, they can be good, and they can be bad. And it's just one of those things that you have to try one and see where it's at. Uh, for example, the Parker's Heritage uh, that I have that's cognac finished. Mine has a little bit of sulfur on it. Not a bad way. I pick it up. It's not necessarily my favorite release of theirs. Um, but I wish the cognac had been just a little more rich on that one. It has that really good Heaven Hill uh, Parker's Heritage base to it. Uh, the cognac is in there, but I just wish it was a little richer. And that's why when I reviewed that one years back, I actually brought in at the end the Distiller's Masterpiece 18-year-old, which isn't really fair, but I was just trying to show how a well-done cognac finish should be. It should be rich, bold, kind of elegant, you know, all at one time. And that's what that Distiller's Masterpiece was. Now, when you look at current releases of, you know, cognac finish, Bellmead has done some, and I hear they're kind of up and down with sulfur and badge qualities, but uh, Heaven Hill Select Stock is one that's always done a really good job. Uh, they did a 21 month old, I think a 27 and a 32 month old. I've had the 21 and 32, both fantastic in their own, you know, unique way. The 21 is very vibrant and rich with the fruit and the cognac element and the 32 starts getting that really heavy depth, but kind of lose some of that vibrancy. Um, the only problem with those for me was the price point. You know, you're looking at $200 and up for those. Uh, I know that, I think I checked on that 32 and it was like 450 now, something like that. That's, you know, that's a high price for that bottle. So here at $80, $85, I thought, let's take the chance, see where we're at. So let's go ahead and get to the nosing on it. Uh, the first thing that you notice, again, I had that glass kind of pushed up just so that you could see that color all this time. Uh, but look at it, that's just ridiculous. It's dark, almost like a dark bronze color in the bottle. In the glass, you can start to get the copper hues to it as well. The legs on it just cling to the glass. There's tons of oils in here and probably a good amount of sweetness. But let's get to the nose. At 120 proof, and you can get your nose in this glass, it's, it's, you can feel the proof. Okay, I can tell this is well above 100, but as long as you're breathing through your mouth and your nose, as you should be doing on these high BB, you can get in there and get every element in these aromatics. Now, the first thing I pick up on is a ton of brown sugar and orange oil. So the two things that immediately jump out. Caramel is in here, red rope licorice, so a ton of red fruits. Not just cherry. This is more almost like raspberry being dominant than the actual cherry. But it's a mixed, mixed bag there. Smidge of anise or anise, however you like to say it, but a big clove element going on, along with a very kind of unique yet kind of distinct, well, I say it's unique, but it is a kind of a characteristic of some MGP bourbons, a little bit of nutmeg in here. That's also one thing that kind of stands out in the nose here is that nutmeg element. Even though the clove is bigger, that nutmeg is just so popping. Okay. Beyond that, the orange oils are pouring out of the glass. Cocoa powder is in there. Rich oak in there. 
And there's also a depth to it. It's like a, when you start getting down in there, you can start to get the cocoa and the old oak and the, almost like a, a dusty kind of a leather tone to it as well. Very, very nice, deep, complex aromatic. All right. Let's give it a swirl and let's taste it. Not supposed to judge the first little sip. Wow. But you want to. And it made my mouth just immediately start to salivate. Mm. Very rich. Viscosity is going to be a medium high. Well, it is above medium. It's medium high viscosity. Wow, is it rich. Wow. Okay, you feel like you're just blowing all those flavors. Uh, but when you sit there and it enters, you get that rich brown sugar caramel kind of sweetness with the orange oils carrying right up on top, just kind of like it knows. Wow, and here it is on the mid palate. Gosh, and then it just starts intensifying and getting bolder and richer as you start ramping up on that mid palate. The cinnamon is kind of giving a little warming swell, but it's not sharp cinnamon. It's not like that Saigon cinnamon that's kind of sharp and spicy. It's not like that. It's like a. Uh, good baking spice cinnamon. Like again, it's almost like a center of a cinnamon roll. That starts to swell on that mid palate. The clove is in there with the orange oils. Very, very big clove element to it. Uh, the nutmeg sprinkled in on top. It's not a ton of nutmeg, but again, that's just such a unique character that it kind of pops on it. Here, as I'm chewing on it on the back end, it's turning cocoa powder, dried fruit characters dropping in. It's almost like the, the vibrant, uh, rich, uh, red licorice mixed berry element that was happening up front kind of transforms as it hits that mid palate and it starts turning into dried fruit characteristics on the back end. Cocoa powder, old leather, as it kind of hit that dusty, dense nose, it gets here on the back end, that cocoa old leather characteristic. Little bit of tobacco as well on the back end. The one thing that this reminds me of, and it's now when I'm chewing on it, I'm thinking of how good it is and how unique it is with that nutmeg, the rich orange oils, and that clove element to go along with that very dense old leather, kind of dusty leather character. It reminds me a, a lot of the very good batches of the cigar blend from Joseph Magnus that I've had. Uh, that goes back to like batch one and batch two of those were fantastic. And that was 11 and 18 year old sourced MGP finished in Armagnac casks. And this is nine year old MGP finished in Cognac casks. But the similarities are striking. This has similarities to that cigar blend with the 18 year old in it, that depth that that one had. This has it. And the other thing to note is. Just rolling through, it is doing the exact same thing. Orange oils, big clove, the brown sugar up front, the red fruits turning. Cinnamon swell. Right about here is where you start getting the cocoa powder and the uh, fruits are turning into the dried fruits. Here comes the leather and the tobacco in there almost simultaneously here on that back end. Rich oak, not really tannins, it's just rich sweet oak character laying underneath all that and everything just rolls for a very very long finish again this for 80 85 dollars even if it was even if it was 150 dollars is well worth it uh, this was a fantastic um, blend and uh, finishing done by the 18 distilling company there in dc uh, so if you're up there and you happen to see this uh, untitled number eight, be sure and pick up a uh, bottle. But if you can't, like I said, go to the bourbon steak restaurant, get a pour of this, you know, just for yourself. It's a fantastic pour. Uh, so anyway, thank you all for watching this video. I hope you all have a wonderful National Bourbon Day today as I will be finishing this here shortly. Uh, thank you for leaving all those great comments. Again, please follow me on Facebook at Liquor Hound. I'm also on Twitter and um, Instagram under Liquor Hound as well. Anyway, thank you so much. Have a great evening and cheers.